We continue coverage of the Delaware gun legislation on State of Play. In the studio this week, we welcome one of the sponsors of one piece of legislation, Representative Valerie Longhurst of Bear. Also here is Representative Steve Smick of Milton. Now, I was going to call this a debate, but we tend to have conversations here in Delaware. So starting with you, Representative Longhurst, uh, you've had hearings on the uh, background check bill. Do you feel as if it's going in a positive direction? Um, I think it's going in a positive direction because we're getting a lot of input. Um, we have had a lot of testimony. We've had a lot of um, people writing in. We've had a lot of emails. So we've really had a chance in the last three months to actually discuss it, read emails, and see where the direction is going with the bill. Um, we have met, the administration has met with the NRA to kind of put some amendments to make the bill a little bit even better and stronger mm -hmm. and s gain more support. Um, I've also met with the NRA and they've proposed um, a few pieces of amendments that we're looking into. So, you know, it's a process, but we're getting there and I think the debate has been healthy and long and um, it's, I, th I do think it's going in the right direction. NRA households, uh, there was a study not long ago, about 74% of the households? Well, in Delaware, 80% of the people that were polled are in favor of the um, background check bill. Yes. Okay. What about you, Representative Smick? Where, where do you stand? Do you oppose it? Do you uh, support it? Well, you remember that I'm new to this, uh, so I'm going to try and look into my constituency on the matter. And I do have a few people that, if you look at the last time that we spoke, um, that have gun shops inside my area. And on its face, this is something that is absolutely embraced. Uh, it's something that goes on in uh, Pennsylvania to the point that it doesn't have the exemptions that Delaware is looking for. So it's a, a little bit more strict in Pennsylvania. However, what I am hearing from my constituency is that overall, even though this may seem a good bill, this is a bill that should have been done before we got to the, um, the direction of gun control. And now on the backs of Newtown, Connecticut, when they're looking for a gun control initiative, they're starting off with something that is actually somewhat palatable and seems to make sense. But people are looking past that and not supporting it only because of what they see coming down the bike. Uh, is it fair to the bill? No. But is it something that my constituency cares about? Absolutely. As, do you feel that this is on the backs of what happened in Connecticut, on the back of what happened? Well, obviously, um, or we wouldn't have the bill today if th that weren't a piece of it. And I think, you know, you need to chip away at the problem. It doesn't solve the problem of taking guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have it. It doesn't solve it, but it chips away at it. If you don't chip away at it, you'll never get to that point. And um, I think people are looking at it like Steve said, they're looking at a bigger picture and not looking at what actually the bill does. You know, and it takes, it does takes away guns out of people that are felons, and it also takes it out of people with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, there were about 3,500 people in the last six years that were denied a background check. Now those people can find other alternatives. Of that 3,500, 10% had mental health problems. We don't know who those people are unless they go for the background check. Now what you're saying is that they can go from um, a, a dealer to a private sale, and that 10%, well, that would be you know, 30, 40 people in Delaware that have that opportunity to get that gun that have mental health issues. That's a serious issue. The, the, the boy in, um, in the Sandy Cook uh, scenario, he had a mental health issue. You know, that was a completely different scenario because it was a gun from his mom, but that's the type of individual we do not want to have a gun. Mm -hmm. And if we stop it with the dealer and we stop it with private sales, we're, we're, we're making it a lot more difficult for that person to get that gun. And yeah. I, think that's, I think it's a way to go. And then we've had that conversation. You actually, you're concerned about the mental health part of it too. That I think should be the primary focus of this. Um, the, the gun is not the problem as much as, and I, I think I gave the analogy before, you don't blame the wrong answer on the pencil, you blame it on the student. And the, uh, the gun itself isn't something that is the danger, it's that person behind it. Right. So um, mm -hmm. the representative is absolutely correct in saying that these are, and this is an issue, the yeah. mental health system. However, we have to also remember that where are we getting this information? What is actually flagging this person from that mental health issue? And it's currently only the state 
systems that are inputting this. So you're looking at the health and social services to input this, and you have to actually be arrested. Uh, th that point of arrest is a flag that says if you've been committed to a mental institution for being a danger to yourself or others, then you would never have a gun again. But where we find problems with this is that those are the extremes. There are dangers in our society of people that actually just need help in that point of their life. Would they need to have a gun then? No. But it doesn't mean that they won't get better, that that mental health issue may be overcome. When that occurs, that's when we should be able to unflag this person. And we don't have any system set up for that. Currently, our um, health industry that's in the private industry has very little say on what they can do to help us with this. What do you think about Senator Lavelle's seller uh, beware bill that he recently proposed? You know, I'm, I can't comment on that because I haven't really looked at it. Okay. I haven't read it. But you've, you've... I'd be more than happy to comment on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't understand that, why you would put a bill in that you would ask the average citizen to know the law and to look at somebody and say, if they're going to sell that gun to me, that I have to go and find a dealer or somebody to do a background check on this individual. I don't know, and then make it a felon if they don't do that. I don't know how you do that. You, and, and the other problem with it is that you know you don't know if a family member has a, has a mental illness or has been convicted of something. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. But you know, every, we're every legislator has different opinions down there, and I think the background check bill in this direction is is far more secure than doing something in that area. Okay. So not really an upstate, no. downstate battle, even though we've seen gun purchases increase uh, pretty much since mm -hmm. we've started to talk about gun yeah, control. Yeah, everybody's afraid. When they're afraid, they go out and purchase more. So the dealers, I'm sure, are very happy with that. And I know they can't keep the guns off the, uh, yeah. uh, you know, in stock. Um, I don't think it's an upstate, downstate thing. I think it's an individually driven by your district. Um, as Steve said, you know, he has to look at his district. I look at my district. I've only probably received about five emails against it and more for it. Um, but I've received a lot of emails from within the state against it and for it. So it's gone beyond my district. And I do represent my district, but I also represent the state of Delaware. And I think that's the way Steve and I have to look at these bills, is that, yes, we represent our district, but we also represent the state of Delaware. And if 85% mm -hmm. or 90% of Delawareans really want this bill to pass, I mean, that's a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And Representative Smick, you've probably received more emails oh, than well, five. <laughs> being on the committee, I have to tell you, I'm, I've been getting communications from throughout the state. Um, my constituency, I, I don't know really uh, how to, to gather all of them and say which one's which, but usually they let me know if they live inside my district. I find that if you're going to look at and anal um, analyze the information that's coming in, the person that is against the, the, uh, this bill, which is you know, my friend's bill, I mean, I, I would love to be able to support this, but what they're afraid of is the the opportunity of a government to actually hold on to and find out where these guns are. They don't want their guns registered unless, of course, it is of high value and they want to be able to bring it you know, back if it's ever stolen. But there's a uh, expectation of privacy and owning that gun. They're afraid that when you uh, uh, buy this gun from someone, from your neighbor, that the background check goes to the seller and the buyer and then the gun of course yes. is identified those are the things that they're afraid of is a uh, involuntary um, registration of of these guns the person that's contacting me seems to have read the bill and is familiar with what they don't like about the bill and they seem to be individuals the people that are for the bill seem to be coming in mass and I had a guy that called me uh, not too long ago and he says, listen, I just want to let you know, uh, Representative Smick, I live inside your district. The, um, I want to advise you to vote for this bill. I said, great, I have to tell you, I don't get many of your phone calls. Why don't you tell me what you like about the bill? And he couldn't do it. He says, well, uh, I haven't read it. I don't know anything about it. So I explained, I said, well, this is what it does and it's really not a bad idea. What do you think of this? He says, oh no, I don't want you to support that at all. I, so after our conversation, I was able to find that he is 
registered as a Democrat, and it's a Democrat group that called him, told his wife, have, you know, make this phone call to Steve. And he did that, and now he is not for the bill. I'm amazed that well, that, that well, would occur. Well, some of the problems that you have is that people out in the public don't really read that bill. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I have people that call me and say, you know, it's you're going to charge fifty dollars for a background check, and the the piece of legislation says up to fifty dollars. So there's a lot of misconception around this bill completely because, and and when I listen to testimony, you know, people only are reading what they want to read and it's difficult to read a piece of legislation and to understand it and as we try to break it down you do find some people will peel away and some people will add to it mm -hmm. i find more people adding to it once they understand it and you know you, you you know one of the biggest arguments is that i'm a law-abiding citizen why do i have to do that well mm -hmm. not everybody is a law-abiding citizen okay mm -hmm. and and that's why we put laws into place we do you know you could talk about speeding you know we put a speeding law in there so that people don't speed and I'm sure you're aware of this because you're a you're a cop is that you put that law in it there's gonna be law-abiding citizens and there aren't gonna be law-abiding citizens but for the most part you make it safe on the roads for people to follow a speed limit so that nobody is hurt or injured and you do have those people that get arrested and that get the ticket. It's the same way with the gun bill and making sure that we are doing background checks. It's just another avenue. The law-abiding citizens are fine. You know, this isn't going to affect you at all. But it will affect the felons and the people with mental health issues. And those are the people we want to capture. Well, we definitely have to have you two in another time and so uh, hopefully we can talk about the uh, ban on large magazines well if, whether or not the large magazines uh, bill will, the, to ban large magazines will actually uh, pass through so one thing for certain you can be sure as the gun debate continues in Dover Newsworks and First will be there to cover it on WHYY thank you so much Representative Valerie Longhurst and Steve Smick for being here hopefully you can join us again on State of Play